lecture, we have discussed about the basic features of centrifugation. So, uh, we started this topic and we have discussed about uh, and we have taken an overview of this particular topic. Now, we have discussed about the that this particular separation technique is based on the behavior of particles of different size, shape or density in applied centrifugal field. Now, uh, if you could recall, we, were dis we have discussed that how the different particles of different size or different density and shape will behave and sediment according to these physical properties and applied centrifugal force. Uh, we have discussed about the basic principle of centrifugation. Now, rate of sedimentation depends on the applied centrifugal field. So, when uh, if you could recall, we started this uh, here. So, the applied centrifugal field which could be given in terms of angular velocity. Now, angular velocity if I say g is the angular velocity, then sorry if g is the applied centrifugal field, then it is given by the square of the angular velocity and the radial distance from the center of rotation. So, sedimentation rate will depend on one of the factors will be the applied centrifugal field. Now, this applied centrifugal field that is uh, can also be expressed in terms of revolutions per minute. Now, here you have uh, 1 revolution equals 2 pi radians. So, what you can do is you can express this like if you have to convert this angular velocity which is expressed in radians per second into revolutions per minute, then you can do it by 2 pi revolution per minute upon 60. So, this could be substituted in above equation and which becomes 4 pi square revolutions per minute upon 3600. Now, this particular quantity does it applied centrifugal field could also be expressed in terms of relative centrifugal field or in terms of multiples of the g value that is the gravitational pull. So, uh, if you uh, substitute this particular like say uh, in terms of multiples of gravitational force, then it could also be written as and here uh, you have to put r that is radial distance also. So, revolutions per minute into 981 that is the 981 uh, is the gravitational uh, force here that is 981 centimeter. Uh, per square uh, per second square. Uh, so, in multiples of uh, in multiples of gravitational force you can calculate and this is R C F or relative centrifugal field. So, the basic part is one is that relative centrifugal field will play an important role in determining the rate of sedimentation. Now, two parameters of considerable significance uh, when you are selecting particular centrifuge, one is g force or the applied centrifugal field or you can also say relative centrifugal field. Now, g force is in multiples of g actually. So, that force uh, relative centrifugal force which is acting on particles here is exponential to the speed of the rotation as you have seen in the uh, equation. Now, doubling the speed of rotation will increase the centrifugal force by a factor of 4. Likewise, the centrifugal force also increases with the distance from the axis of rotation like it is directly proportional to r that is the radial distance from the center. So, as the distance increases, so the centrifugal force also increases. So, these two factors needs to be considered uh, and uh, are significant when we are selecting particular centrifuge. Now, when you uh, select a particular centrifuge, uh, 
the protocols for centrifugation will typically specify the amount of the centrifugal force in terms of relative centrifugal field to be applied to the sample and they will it is rather uh, uh, a practice that uh, in particularly high speed centrifuges rather than the rotational speeds or revolutions per minute, uh, the centrifugal force is uh, more uh, specified or given. Now, this distance is important and this particular uh, distinction is important. So, this distinction is important because two rotors with different diameters that is uh, because as they will have different diameters, so will be the radial distance actually uh, of the particle where it, it is placed in that centrifuge. So, when they are running at the same rotational speed, they will be subjected or sample will be subjected to different accelerations or different centrifugal force because the radial distance will be different in two centrifuges. So, during circular motion the acceleration is the product of the radius and the square of the angular velocity and the centrifugal field relative to g uh, uh, that is what we said. Uh, so, this is relative centrifugal field. So, most of the time relative centrifugal field is taken or is specified uh, for a particular centrifuge like for example, many centrifuges can go up to a particular g force only or particular centrifugal field only because uh, they are uh, they are uh, the rotor is meant uh, rotor is made in such a way that it cannot take stress more than that. So, relative centrifugal field is quite important in here. Now, uh, many times it is very easy or convenient to, uh, uh, to uh, work in terms of revolutions per minute and for that a nomograph uh, can be used to obtain the speed of a centrifuge rotor uh, necessary for a desired RC, RCF or relative centrifugal field. For example, if you want to do a particular centrifugation uh, perform a particular centrifugation method and a particular protocol has given that you have to uh, use RCF value, particular RCF value uh, and since you would like to program it your uh, uh, centrifuge in terms of revolutions per minute, then the nomograph can help which gives uh, an idea about like uh, nomograph gives you both RCF, the revolutions per minute, rotational speed and also the radius of the uh, of the uh, centrifuge. So, all these things could be related uh, like I will tell you how. So, this quick estimate is useful for low speed centrifugation applications. However, it is more accurate. Uh, so, many times you know revolutions per minute could be utilized for low speed uh, uh, applications, but for higher ap uh, speed applications uh, RCF calculations uh, for the speeds uh, has to be done or performed and you need accurate RCF values uh, for that matter. So, what is uh, done? Uh, most of the uh, centrifuges might have nomogram instructions. Uh, it is a measure uh, like what you have to do is measure the radius uh, from the center of the centrifuge to the rotor, uh, centrifuge rotor to the end of the test tube carrier and many times it is given actually in the uh, rotors. So, you uh, do not really have like there are particular uh, uh, specific numbers of rotors and that could be matched here. Uh, then, so then you have to find out what is the relative centrifugal force required for the application. So, you know two things, one you know uh, either you know the rotor number or, uh, of a particular uh, company or and you know the relative centrifugal force or field which needs to be applied. Uh, then there will be revolutions per minute also a uh, straight line connecting the value of the radius with the relative centrifugal force value will enable the speed of the rotor to be read of the column in nomograph uh, in a nomogram. So, uh, this is a typical nomogram uh, for estimation of RPM setting actually and here as you can see there are three scales in here. Uh, one is for the radius actually of the rotor uh, like I said from the center to where uh, the tubes are placed uh, tip of the uh, tube. 
Now, here many times rather than these radius, uh, the centrifuge uh, the table might contain uh, the number or particular uh, commercial uh, specification of the rotor. Now, from here say you know the radius of the rotor uh, and you know the this gives you the uh, relative centrifugal field. So, if you know say this is uh, your radius is 6 centimeter and your uh, relative centrifugal field is 150, then if you draw a line from here and continue that, then you will be uh, your line will touch the point where the RPM number would be or RPM setting will be known. So, that way you can do the RPM setting uh, and uh, that way you fulfill the requirement of uh, the particular relative centrifugal force. So, the relative centrifugal uh, field or F, F, means in terms of G uh, multiples of G or in very simple terms applied centrifugal field is one important uh, uh, determinant of the rate of sedimentation. Now, rate of sedimentation also depends uh, besides applied centrifugal field on other factors. One is that is mass of the particle. Now, mass is the density into the volume, volume and uh, multiplied by the density uh, that is your uh, mass of the particle uh, and then it also depends on uh, density and viscosity of the medium in, it, in which it is suspended. Remember most of the uh, almost all the experiments in centrifugation is done where particles are, uh, are suspended or they are put in a liquid medium. It could be different types of liquid medium and then also one factor. So, one is mass of the particle, uh, another is density and viscosity of the medium and another is extent to which the particle shape deviates from the spherical. That is a particle is uh, an ideal spherical molecule or it is say elongated or some other kind of shapes it takes. Uh, here uh, spherical and aspherical uh, needs to be remembered, aspherical like elongated or also uh, spherical here is considered in terms of non hydrated and aspherical in terms of hydrated molecule. So, if you consider that uh, it is assumed if a particle uh, which is which needs to be centrifuged is assumed to be a sphere of known volume and density, then the net force experienced when the centrifugal force at an angular velocity uh, of say omega radians per second is given that was volume into density and the force which will be applied or force which will be experienced will be uh, 4 3 pi r cube uh, and the, here r p is for the particle actually it is different from the radial distance in here. And then for, uh, uh, for correcting for buoyancy here uh, this is uh, density of the particle and this is density of the medium. So, that is uh, rho p minus rho m is also taken into account. So, this is the force which will be experienced by a particle of a particular mass or we can say volume into density. So, this will also affect the force experienced by the particle. Now, there is another force which will also come into play. Uh, when particles uh, move through a medium, they will also generate a friction as they migrate through the solution. So, if you could recall in electrophoresis also we were talking about the frictional force which opposes the forward motion of the particle. So, in the same way here also a particle is moving through a solution and as, as it moves through a solution with a particular velocity this will also experience an opposing force that is frictional force and is also called frictional coefficient. Uh, so, if the particle is spherical and is moving at a known velocity, then its frictional force appearing uh, that is opposing the, the forward motion will be given by V f, where V is the velocity of the sedimentation particle, sedimenting particle and f is the frictional coefficient. So, uh, here uh, this is like uh, uh, the force which will be experienced by or the opposing force which will be experienced by the uh, particle. 
Now, frictional coefficient of a particle is a function of its size, shape and hydration and also viscosity of the medium and by the Stokes equation for an unhydrated spherical particle. So, that is the ideal one we are talking about. The, uh, this is given by uh, this particular equation that is uh, frictional coefficient equals 6 pi uh, neta r which is r t is the radius of the particle. So, your force opposing force or frictional force becomes uh, this particular equation where you have put in the velocity also. Uh, so, frictional coefficient into velocity that is the viscous drag you can say uh, comes into play as soon as the particle starts accelerating into the solution due to the applied centrifugal field. Now, so this particle of known volume and density which is present in a medium of constant density will be accelerated in a centrifugal field. So, as one as the centrifugal field uh, is applied that is a centrifuge is switched on uh, after putting your sample into the centrifuge. Uh, the particle will start moving or accelerating in that particular solution of particular of, of constant density. Now, as the particle accelerates there is a opposing force which starts developing and more is the acceleration more will be the resisting force actually. So, the net force on the particle after certain period of time uh, equals the force resisting its motion through the medium. So, as particle accelerates and after uh, very fast actually uh, this force is uh, equaled by a resisting force and then particle moves with a constant velocity without acceleration. So, then what you have is you have the force that is forward force due to this uh, uh, applied centrifugal fold, uh, force uh, which is being experienced by the particle and there is opposing force which is uh, frictional force. So, these becomes equal. So, so uh, the values for both these could be substituted in here uh, uh, for f and uh, for a frictional force and when you would like to calculate the velocity or rate of sedimentation here. So, the balancing of this force occurs quickly as uh, uh, it happens very fast uh, and result is that particle will sediment at a constant rate actually or it will uh, have a constant velocity, uh, it will achieve constant velocity after certain period of time. Now, this sedimentation of particle uh, it could include lot of different kinds of particles and this could be explained by the Stokes equation and which describes the movement of a sphere in a gravitational field. Uh, now, the equation here is given calculates the velocity of sedimentation and these are various parameters which have been utilized. So, velocity which is a change actually it is a rate of uh, motion uh, per unit time actually. Uh, so, here you can see these are uh, like parameters which are involved is uh, like your particle uh, radius, the densities of the particle and the medium, angular velocity, the radial distance, uh, then uh, this neta value which comes from frictional coefficient uh, or viscos this, this is viscosity of the uh, medium. So, all these factors play a role. Now, this we were talking about this equation is for an ideal spherical molecule which is unhydrated spherical molecule. Now, supposing there is a non spherical molecule uh, as in uh, case of say rod like molecules or elongated or flattened molecules. Uh, for example, DNA uh, is a rod like or uh, like molecule it is not a sphere a spherical molecule. Many proteins uh, I was talking about like many the structural proteins they are not spherical molecules like for example, myosin or actin or for example, collagen these are not spherical molecules. So, they will experience uh, considerable frictional resistance as compared to a uh, spherical molecule. So, the frictional coefficient of the uh, this molecules uh, has to be compared with the frictional coefficient of a similar sphere, spherical or sphere here and uh, so the equation here 
will be different from the previous equ equation which we have seen for ideal spherical molecule and that is anhydrated molecule. Now, here uh, this will be different, uh, the resultant is that particle will sediment at a lower rate and equation will become this one where you have to add one another factor that is the frictional coefficient of the uh, particular elongated molecule or non spherical molecule compared to that of a sphere here, uh, frictional coefficient of that. So, this has to be uh, taken into account and where uh, this difference has to be taken for and this will depend on particular kind of molecule or uh, particular unhydrated uh, or sorry hydrated and uh, spherical molecule and uh, all these factors has to be taken into account. So, now the from equations, it is very clear that sedimentation rate of a particle is dependent on many factors. Now, these include one is it is directly proportional to the size of the particle, where I was telling you the radius r p actually of the particle. And since the equation involves the square of the particle radiation, so it is apparent that the size of the particle has Greatest, the greatest influence upon sedimentation. So, if you could recall here it is r square actually or r p square which is radius of the particle. So, uh, it has uh, quite a lot of effect on the sedimentation that is a particle is doubled then sedimentation rate will be more actually. Uh, it is also directly proportional to the difference in density between the particle and the medium. So, one uh, like uh, if you see this equation here, uh, there is like uh, uh, dens density of the particle and density of the medium. So, this is the difference between uh, the density of the particle and medium is very important. Uh, what does this uh, mean actually here that the uh, sedimentation will be uh, or you can say uh, the rate of sedimentation will be 0 when the density of the particle and the medium are equal, if both are equal then the sedimentation becomes 0, there will not be any sedimentation. And many times when you are doing density gradient centrifugation and if the particle uh, density is lower than the density of the medium, then the particle floats on the density on the medium actually and does not move further. You may apply any amount of uh, centrifugal force, but it will not move. Likewise, if the particle uh, density uh, like particles of similar density, but only slightly different sizes can have large dif differences in their sedimentation rate. So, if we compare medium like uh, one is that it will be 0 when the density of the particle and the medium are equal uh, uh, like uh, and uh, when it is like uh, uh, mediums density is more then it will just float on the uh, this. and uh, if it is like higher than this, then it will move faster in there. So, then medium will not have any effect on that. Now, particles of similar density, uh, but only slightly different size can have large differences in their sedimentation rate. Also, the sedimentary sedimentation rate will decrease when the viscosity of the medium increases. If you could recall, the, the it is inversely proportional that is uh, the velocity or the rate of sedimentation is inversely proportional to the uh, viscosity of the medium. So, these factors play an important role and apart from that uh, as we have seen applied centrifugal field where omega square r or angular velocity in terms of square of the angular velocity and the radial distance will also play a role in uh, determining the sedimentation rate. So, the sedimentation rate uh, or velocity also decreases like in the last equation we have seen the frictional coefficient ratio actually. Uh, as So, it will decrease as the frictional coefficient ratio increases uh, and it is uh, approximately 1 for a spherical molecule. So, all these factors will play a role in uh, the velocity of sedimentation. Now, there is another term uh, we can determine that is sedimentation time that is how much time a particle will take to sediment actually uh, to a certain extent. So, the sedimentation time for a spherical particle in a centrifugal field in terms of in seconds actually 
uh, it is given by this particular equation. This is derived from the earlier equation, where t that is the time of sedimentation in seconds is given by this particular equation. And this is uh, log r b upon r, uh, this is r b upon r t. Now, r t is the radial distance from the axis of rotation to the liquid meniscus and r b is the radial distance from the axis of rotation to the bottom of the tube. So, uh, this equation gives you uh, the sedimentation time here. Now, when we say sedimentation time that is how much time a particular particle takes for sedimentation. Uh, so, a mixture of if we say heterogeneous approximately spherical particles is taken and they can be separated by centrifugation on the basis of various factors like uh, as we have uh, mentioned many times uh, density and size that is the most important shape will also come in. Then time required for their sedimentation or extent of sedimentation after a given time. So, how much time they require for sedimentation or you can take that after a particular time how much uh, what is the extent of sedimentation. Now, if we take certain examples the order of separation for say uh, the constituents of cell or whole cell and it is like subcellular organelles and other th uh, parts then order is somewhere whole cell and cell debris will uh, settle down first and then comes the nuclei. Uh, chloroplast, then mitochondria, lysosomes. So, this is the order microsomes, ribosomes. This is the order that first whole cell and ribosomes will be the last to uh, sediment. As we can see in this figure here very clearly, uh, if you can uh, see on your screen that you have uh, taken a particular tissue and you have sliced and you uh, done the processing that is homogenization and other things. Uh, now, as this whole thing comes in here and uh, you start sedimentation process, then whole cells or the cell debris will be the first to sediment. Then as you go on centrifuging after each step, you will find that the few things as we have seen in order nucleus and other things will come first after the cell debris as I have shown here like whole cell, nuclei, chloroplast likewise here you can see after certain period of time uh, nucleus and cytoskeleton is, uh, uh, is sedimented or you can say palleted and as you go along you uh, for more time then mitochondria, lysosomes, peroxisomes, uh, chloroplast etcetera will sediment after cert certain point of uh, uh, certain uh, time. Uh, then more time will be taken by plasma membrane, ER fragments microsomal fractions to sediment and then finally, ribosomes at very high speed and after a longer period of time uh, ribo uh, like uh, uh, ribosomes, viruses, macromolecules will sediment. So, you can see uh, for uh, different things or different constituents of cells you need more time and also this g force also is increased. So, the extent of the time taken for sedimentation or you can say time required for their sedimentation could be a basis for separation because they separate uh, differently uh, uh, and takes different times for sedimentation. So, that is also another important part that you can calculate the sedimentation time of a spherical particle and you can uh, also work for uh, the same thing for a spherical particle and uh, this could be a basis for uh, uh, you can say uh, how much time a spherical particle can be separated or different particles could be separated uh, by a centrifuge by a centrifugation step. All right. So, now another term uh, like sedimentation rate we were talking about as we have discussed uh, and we have talked about this equation here. Now, these complex variables uh, which affect the sedimentation properties. Uh, of a mixed population of particles, they also depend on say concentration of the suspension, nature of the medium, design and handling of the centrifuge, all these things uh, affect that. Uh, for example, like we were talking about the radial distance and if you see here, there are three types of rotors here. One is swinging bucket rotor, one is fixed angle rotor, another is 
vertical tube rotor. Now, they have when the centrifuge is switched on, they will have different like a swinging bucket rotor will uh, extend out um, as uh, in the direction of the centrifugal field, which is outward, radially outward. Um, this angular ones, they will remain as such, because uh, they are uh, kind of put in a uh, fixed angle and vertical also are picked point in a fixed angle. So, they will now the particles at different places will experience different centrifugal force. Now, if you can see here, this is very clear in here, this is the axis of rotation and this we are just showing you for uh, this particular one uh, only. So, this is axis of rotation and you have this is for uh, uh, this uh, swinging bucket rotor, you can see that particle will be here also as it is in solution mixed in solution then there will be a uh, different centrifugal force at r minimum, r average and r maximum. So, many times when you want to calculate the centrifugal field uh, for a particular sample, may you can take r average uh, or r effective r could be taken in here, uh, r average could be taken in here. Uh, now, likewise when you are considering the spherical particles. Uh, and if you are not very sure about the radius of the particle like we are utilizing, then R effective could be taken in there. Uh, so, here uh, since this will also affect, uh, geometry of rotors will also affect and uh, the particle where it is in suspension will affect its uh, sedimentation rate will be affected by that, because they will be experienced different centrifugal force. Likewise, in angled rotors also you have three uh, uh, like uh, distances from the axis of rotation that is r minimum here and at this place this is r maximum. So, r average could be uh, taken for calculations uh, different various calculations here. Now, there is another term which is uh, quite important uh, that is sedimentation coefficient. Sedimentation coefficient is the sedimentation velocity of a particle. Uh, per unit centrifugal field. So, sedimentation coefficient could be expressed as sedimentation rate or sedimentation velocity of a particular particle per unit centrifugal field and it could be denoted by this particular equation that is small s that v that is velocity upon omega square r. So, sedimentation coefficient is another important uh, part and sedimentation coefficient as we will see uh, uh, the sedimentation rate could be expressed in terms of sedimentation coefficient. Now, many times uh, since uh, this is like uh, uh, can be done in different uh, ways, uh, there is another term called standard sedimentation coefficient. Now, standard sedimentation coefficient of a substance uh, in water at 20 degree Celsius is taken. Now, since sedimentation rate studies may be performed using a wide variety of solvent and solute systems and even at different temperatures uh, when you do that the sedimentation coefficient might come different. So, it could be like corrected uh, to a constant value of standard uh, sedimentation coefficient which is taken in water at 20 degree Celsius. Now, the measured value of sedimentation coefficient uh, which is affected by uh, temperature uh, solution viscosity and density is often connected or uh, it is corrected to a value that could be obtained in a, a medium with viscosity and density of water and at 20 degree Celsius and this could be expressed as a sedimentation coefficient in water or a standard sedimentation coefficient and this is given by this particular equation. So, when it is corrected for uh, this, so S 20 W is a uh, uh, it should be for water. Uh, so, S uh, observed and then these parameters are taken uh, uh, to correct this, where uh, you can see S observed is the sedimentation coefficient observed in a particular medium. Uh, then uh, this is rho uh, that is density of water at 20 degree Celsius, uh, then uh, density of water at temperature T, particular temperature T you have taken. Uh, this is partial specific volume of the solute, this is partial specific volume of the solute. Uh, this term here uh, that is uh, derived velocity of the solvent to that of the water 
and uh, this one here this term is relative velocity of water at the temperature T compared to that at uh, compared to that at 20 degrees Celsius. So, all these things uh, could be uh, like uh, sedimentation could be corrected to standard value here and uh, uh, this could be calculated for certain uh, very accurate calculations. So, uh, now sedimentation coefficient is usually uh, very small for most biological molecules. So, uh, uh, this particular one now basic unit for convenience here is taken as 10 raised to the power minus 30 second. Now, it is uh, uh, denoted as 1 Swedberg unit or 1 s as we can call it. So, uh, this is like uh, when you have different kinds of constituents and different kinds of particles the sediment at different rates and as we have seen sedimentation coefficient we have taken that is uh, uh, per unit field uh, uh, it is uh, uh, taken velocity per unit field. Uh, so, for convenience and for uh, uh, like uh, it is very like we said sedimentation coefficient is very small for most biological mol molecules 1 s equals 10 raised to the power minus 13 second. So, uh, what does that means? So, it means that a molecule possessing a sedimentation coefficient of say uh, 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 13 seconds will have a value of 5 s. So, uh, uh, like uh, as the sedimentation coefficient uh, increases it means the sedimentation rate also increases. So, this gives an idea about the size of the molecule as it is influenced by shape, size and density of the particle. Therefore, larger the particle larger is its s value. Now, this s value is comes from uh, the is, is in the honor of uh, a scientist Swedberg as we have uh, discussed this in uh, in the history of the centrifugation development of the centrifugation method. Uh, the and in his honor this uh, name uh, is given uh, for his pioneer pioneering work. So, this gives an idea about size of the molecule and uh, it is influenced by various factors as we have discussed about. Now, larger the particle, so uh, you have a larger particle and larger will be the s value that is uh, its Swedberg unit and faster will be its sedimentation. So, if you consider sedimentation coefficient in Swedberg units, the enzymes and soluble proteins are uh, have only a small uh, values that is from 2 to 25 s. Now, as you go along uh, bigger like say subcellular organelles this will increase. For example, nucleic acids have uh, s value in range of 3 to 100 s depending on where, where from you are isolating this. Ribosomes and polysomes might have 20 to 200 uh, s uh, of value. Then viruses the value could range from 40 to 1000 s. In membranes which could range uh, the value could range or Swedberg unit value could range from 100 to uh, 100 into 10 raised to the power of 3 s. Likewise, for mitochondria it could range uh, it could range range from 20 into 10 raised to the power of 3 to 70 into 10 raised to the power of 3 that is uh, around 70,000 s. Uh, and in nuclei uh, uh, like uh, other uh, like uh, nuclei uh, for nuclei it could be between 4000 uh, 10 raised to power 3 to 40000 10 raised to power 3 and earlier we have talked about nucleic acids that is 3 to 100 s is not nuclei it is a nucleic acids actually. So, you have a range of sedimentation coefficient here and uh, which will vary from very small for uh, soluble proteins or enzymes to very large for say nuclei or whole cells actually. Uh, remember sedimentation coefficients are not additive. For example, we have ribosomes which are bacterial ribosomes or prokaryotic ribosomes are 70 s and the eukaryotic ribosomes are 80 s actually. 
Now, if you consider uh, both of them, then individual ribosomes are for prokaryotes it is 50 s plus 30 s and so it does not equate to 70 s. So, when the uh, two ribosomal subunits they are separate, they sediment it at different rate uh, as compared to the, uh, the ribosomes full unit when they come together they sediment at a rate which is cannot be added here. Likewise, this is also the individual units for uh, eukaryotic ribosomes is 60 s and 40 s which does not equals to 100 s actually rather it is 80 s uh, for that matter. So, uh, uh, what does that mean is that the, the sedimentation coefficients or s units in terms of Swedberg unit they are not additive as such and so they, they has to be calculated uh, separately. Now, uh, this is a table which shows uh, s values of and molecular weights for various uh, protein fractions and as you see here uh, as the molecular weight increases so is the s values uh, because uh, their uh, size will increase and uh, they will be sedimenting at a higher rate actually. Likewise, like I have shown you here, like I have told you uh, for uh, different uh, uh, subcellular organs or cells as the size increases and density uh, or other factors increases, the S value also increases. So, this was a uh, uh, basic uh, principle uh, and uh, uh, the various equations which we have discussed for uh, centrifugation. Uh, process of centrifugation. So, in this lecture to summarize actually uh, we have discussed about the basic principle of centrifugation, where we have discussed that how rate of sedimentation or the velocity of sedimentation is affected by various factors including one factor was applied centrifugal field. That is the applied centrifugal field could be expressed in terms of either angular velocity into radial distance, square of angular velocity into radial distance or it could be also expressed in terms of relative centrifugal field. Now, uh, most of the time uh, the relative centrifugal field is uh, utilized. Another important factor we have discussed about is that the sedimentation uh, or the velocity will also depend on uh, the mass of the particle the viscosity and density of the medium and also whether a particle is a sphere or aspherical. Is it is spherical and non hydrated or, or aspherical and hydrated molecule. So, uh, depending on that uh, this uh, sedimentary sedimentation rate will differ. Now, as the particle moves in a medium or a solution when applied centrifugal field is uh, switched on or centrifugation uh, centrifuge system and there is a centrifugal force on the particle, then a frictional force opposing force also develops and this opposing force uh, opposes the motion of the particle uh, that is forward motion of the particle uh, or you can say outward motion of the particle. And uh, uh, this is like uh, after accelerating for certain uh, certain time. Uh, like very quickly the opposing force that is forward force and the opposing force become equal and particle moves in the solution with a constant velocity. Uh, you can also one can also calculate uh, the time of sedimentation or the extent of sedimentation in particular time as uh, we have discussed. Uh, aspherical particles or hydrated particles which are like say elongated or odd shaped particles will experience more friction and therefore, rate of sedimentation is lower. And uh, one has to uh, like uh, this particular factor uh, where uh, uh, the frictional coefficient for that is ratio of f frictional coefficient experienced and if, uh, frictional coefficient of a sphere, sphere needs to be taken into account. Also, we have discussed about that uh, the sedimentation coefficient that is sedimentation rate or sedimentation 
velocity per unit field actually centrifugal field. And from sedimentation coefficient we have derived uh, uh, in, in the honor of uh, uh, scientist T Swedberg the Swedberg unit which is 10 raised to the power minus 13 seconds. Now, it is a smaller for uh, or quite a small for uh, uh, for say proteins or soluble proteins and other enzymes. So, uh, it is expressed in terms of Swedberg units and one Swedberg unit is 10 raised to the power minus 13 seconds. And uh, as so, you can compare different particles or different uh, molecules to be separated, biomolecules to be separated or subcellular organelles to be separated on the basis of Swedberg units. Uh, so, it gives an idea about size uh, like greater the size greater will be the uh, uh, units. And so, as the uh, uh, like say if you have 5s, uh, as the units increase like from say 1s to 100s to 1000s, uh, the rate of sedimentation also increases. And so, you will have an idea that the particle is smaller uh, or larger uh, and density size and shape all these things could be looked into that ok uh, yes uh, higher the Swedberg units uh, then higher the sedimentation rate because of uh, particular nature of that particle in terms of physical properties we have discussed. We have discussed uh, so in these two lectures one uh, earlier than this we have discussed we have given an overview and in this lecture we have discussed about uh, the basic principle of the centrifugation technique. In the next lecture, we are uh, will be starting, uh, we will start discussing uh, like different types of centrifuges, uh, different types of rotors, uh, the care uh, needs to be taken uh, for the rotor, the safety aspects uh, which are involved while using centrifugation technique and also some of the uh, preparative methods uh, in terms of uh, uh, say differential centrifugation or density gradient centrifugation. So, coming lectures will include all these uh, all this material uh, as we go along. Thank you.